Sarah, uh, if you do not like to buy the book as you know a hardcover book, so you have a PDF version of your textbook that I posted on Google Class. Okay, but of course you need the book because sometimes we need to review information uh, you have on your textbook. So if you do not like to buy the you know uh, hardcover. You have a PDF version of your book on Google Class. You can download it and keep it. Okay. Yeah, we can. Okay, so let's start. We said that before we, you know, move on to the writing process, we have to review the uh, the the smaller parts of writing, which are writing sentences. So we have to start with the clauses. So we have the independent and dependent clauses. So in the coming lectures that you are going to have, you will review the sentence structure, which will help you improve your skills in crafting sentences. So that's why we need to review the, the kind of sentences because it will help you improve your skills in writing sentences. When you know how to vary the kinds of sentences you write, you can express your thoughts in the clearest and most interesting way possible. So this is the, the benefit of reviewing uh, the kind of sentences before we move on to the process of writing. So according to that, according to that, you will learn to use the clauses to develop varying types of well-structured sentences. So, what is a clause? Okay, we need to know what is a clause before we move on to the detailed information. So the clauses are the building the blocks of sentences. So a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. So what is a clause? You have to keep in mind a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. So it is necessary for a clause to have a subject and a verb. So when you analyze a clause and you find there is a subject and there is a verb, that means it is a clause. If one of them is missing, that means it is not a clause. Okay, keep in mind that for a clause, you should have a subject and a verb. So you have examples of clauses here. First, ecology is a science. So ecology is a subject. and is is a verb so we have a subject ecology we have a verb is and we have a complement science so this is a close the other one because pollution causes cancer so pollution is a subject and causes is a verb so it is also a close so we have here two kinds of closes we are going to review the kinds later on but Keep in mind that both of them contain a subject and a verb. That's why they are clauses. So look at these examples to protect the environment, to protect the environment, and after surviving a long illness. There is no subject and there is no verb. So they are not clauses. If we compare them, compare them to the Proceeding ones, ecology is a science, and because pollution causes cancer, they are different. Because for the previous previous one, there is a subject and there is a verb here to protect the environment after surviving a long illness. They are not clauses because there is no subject and there is no verb. So we have two kinds of clauses. We have dependent and independent clause. Okay, academic writers combine these two kinds of clauses in order to write a variety of sentence types. So, in order to write in an interesting way, we need to 
vary our sentences. So sometimes we need to write in simple sentences. In other times, we need to write in compound or complex sentences in order to make our writing interesting for the readers. So that's why we need to write you know, sometimes in independent and sometimes in dependent, we combine them as compound or as complex sentences in order to vary the style of our writing. So let's start with independent clauses. The first kind of clauses, which is independent clauses. So an independent clause contains a subject and a verb. There should be a subject and a verb, and often a complement. So if you need a complement, so you have to write a complement to complete the meaning of the clause. So the independent clause expresses a complete thought and can stand alone as a sentence. So you have to keep in mind that the independent clause expresses a complete thought there is a complete meaning a clear meaning out of the independent clause and it can stand alone as a sentence without attaching it to another clause to complete the meaning or to complete the thought so this is the most important thing about the independent clause there should be a subject and there should be a verb in addition to that, the meaning should be complete. That's why we do not need to attach it to another clause. That's why we call it independent clause. It can stand alone. It doesn't need another clause to complete the meaning. يعني هنا هي ما تعتمد على clause آخر. Independent معناها معتمدة على نفسها. هذا النوع من the clause معتمد على نفسه. هذا تخلوها بعالكم. Uh, when you need to analyze and uh, understand the kind of clothes that you have. So, you have the first example is the sun rose. So, the sun is a subject and rose is a verb. It is a complete thought. There is a complete thought in this clause and it can stand alone without a need for another clause to complete the meaning. The sun rose. So let's move on to the second example. Water evaporates rapidly in warm climate zones. So water is the subject, evaporates is the verb, and you have a complement, rapidly in warm climate zones. So here we have a subject and we have a verb, and it, it expresses a complete thought. It doesn't need another clause to complete the meaning. So water evaporates probably in warm climate zones. It is, it is a fact and the meaning is clear and there is no need for another clause. So this is the idea about independent clauses. So when you need to analyze sentences and you need to understand what kind of clauses that you have. So first you have to notice that there is a subject and there is a verb. Then you move on to the meaning. If there is a complete meaning, a complete thought, a complete message, so that means it is an independent clause and there is no need for other clauses to complete the meaning. So I hope it's clear till now. So the, the other kind of clauses is the dependent clause. Dependent. So يعتمد على close آخر. هذا يعتمد يريد يعني Close آخر يوضح معنا. So a dependent clause is formed with a subordinator. So there, it, there is a clear sign how to identify the dependent clauses. When you found a subordinator, that means it is a dependent clause. Okay. When there is a subordinator, that means it is a dependent clause. So a dependent clause is formed with the subordinator, such as when, if, that, or who. It also has a subject, a verb, and sometimes a complement. So there should be, for dependent clauses, there should be subject, verb, and a complement if you need it. In addition to that, there is a subordinator because the subordinator will attach the dependent clause to other clauses to complete the thought. 
So when you find a subordinator, subject, verb, and a complement, that means it is a dependent clause. So a dependent clause does not express a complete thought and cannot stand alone as a sentence. Using a dependent clause as a complete sentence is an error because there will be a sentence of fragment because the meaning is incomplete. So when you write dependent clauses, that means when you start with the subordinate, the subject, verb, and the complement, you make sure that you have to attach it to another independent clause to complete the meaning. Okay, you cannot write dependent clauses as sentences. في بعض الأحيان عندي طلاب يكتبون جملة هي مو جملة هي dependent clause يعني يبدي مثلا when أو that أو who أو if بعدين يكمل وياها الكلوز ويخلي نقطة يخلي dependent clause بحده كأنه هو sentence ويخلي نقطة هنا خطأ هذه الجملة كلها تعتبر خطأ because there is no complete thought ناشون اللي تحتاجوا متجون تراجعون كتابتكم وتشوفون نفسكم بعدين جملة subordinator وكاسمين فقط dependent clause معاها لازم أرفق لها independent clause حتى أكمل المعنى أوكي؟ فهنا من نجي نقح الكتابة ونشوف عندنا dependent clause لازم شو نسوي؟ نخلي كما ونكمل وياها another idea حتى نكمل المعنى طبعا sometimes because of the uh, interference of the Arabic language uh, you know some students commit such kind of errors ف يعني يفكر الطالب بالعربي ويكتب بالانجليزي فتوقع عنده مثل هذه الاخطاء so when you edit your writing and you find that you write dependent clauses as sentences you have to edit your writing before you submit your final version so we said that for dependent clauses it contains a subordinator subject verb and if you need a complement so there are examples of uh, dependent clauses شوفوا طلاب اذا تلقون بكتابتكم مثل هذه النوع من الجمل يعني منتصف الكتابه اكو مثل هذه الانواع من الجمل وطبعا تنهوها يعني كجمله بعدها نقطة فهذا خطأ هذا الشيء خطأ لازم نضيف له independent clause so let's review the examples first when the sun rose when the sun rose so if we analyze such kind of a sentence دائما تجيدي أخطاء بهذه الطريقة okay فننتبه إذا عدنا مثل هذه الأخطاء بالكتابة لازم نصححها so for example a student write uh, no dependent clause as a sentence when the sun rose so what happens when the sun rose the meaning is incomplete so what happens okay we need to complete the meaning because it is incomplete here so when is a subordinator the sun is the subject and rose is the verb but what's about the meaning the meaning is incomplete we have to write an independent clause here to complete the meaning. Let's see the other example. Because, because water evaporates rapidly in warm climate zones. And what happens? What is the effect? Okay. What is the effect of this action? Because water evaporates rapidly in warm climate zones. So what happens after that? What is the effect? So, because it's the subordinate to water is the subject, evaporates is the verb, and we have a complement, but the meaning is incomplete. So, we have to write an independent clause and attach it to this one in order to complete the meaning. Okay, number three, whom, whom the voters elected, whom the voters elected, and what else? The meaning is incomplete. So, whom is the subordinator? The voters is the subject, and elected is the verb. But we need a complement. We need, I mean, uh, another clause, another independent clause to complete the meaning. Number four. 
if the drought continues for another year and what happens after that what happens if the drought continues for another year so there should be a result okay here the meaning is incomplete so if is the subordinator the drought subject continues the verb we have a complement but still the meaning is incomplete so we have to write another independent clause here so when you see such kind of clauses that means there is a subordinator subject verb and if you have a complement but the meaning is incomplete that means this is a dependent clause and it cannot stand alone as a sentence it needs another independent clause to complete the meaning so, so sometimes you need to identify the kind of clauses so you just analyze according to grammar and meaning for grammar there is a subordinator there is a subject and there is a verb and what else what is missing the missing is the independent clause so here you you know how to analyze and identify sentences in addition to the meaning من راح تجون تفسرون المعنى وتشوفون اكو خلل بالمعنى معناها انه هذه الجمل تحتاج تعديل راح تعرفون الخطا من الصح او you can identify or recognize the kind of clauses that you have so uh, we said that the uh, dependent clauses starts with subordinators so we have a few of the most common subordinators so of course we have other subordinators but those are the most common ones so you have after although as just as as if as soon as because before even though how if since so that that though unless until but when whenever where and wherever whether which while who whom and whose okay so this is all about the dependent and the independent clauses that you have okay so we said clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb we said we have two kind of clauses dependent and independent for independent clauses there should be a subject and verb and a verb and if you need a complement what recognize independent clauses they expresses they express a complete thought and can stand alone as a whole sentence while for dependent clauses they should contain subordinator in addition to the subject verb and the complement but they cannot express a complete thought that's why they need another independent clause to complete the meaning and you have examples on the most common types of subordinators that you can use so uh, is everything clear for now do you have a question for the kind of clauses you can write in the chat box or you can uh, you can unmute your microphone and talk directly okay So, if it's clear for you, so let's move on to the simple sentences. So let's start after we reviewed the the kind of clauses that we have let's move on to the kind of sentences
اوكي نعمل ريفيو على السمبل سنتنس وممكن بعدها تاخذوا لكم استراحه قصيره ونرجع نكمل على مود يعني تركزون شوي So, for simple sentences, we need first to know what is meant by a sentence. So, a sentence is a group of words that you use to communicate your ideas. So, when you write a sentence, that means you are expressing an idea. So, your readers are going to understand what do you need to tell them what do you need to inform them out of the sentence okay every sentence is formed from one or more clauses and expresses a complete thought so for each sentence there should be at least one clause so one or more if we have independent clauses so it consists of one clause but it contains, for example, dependent and independent clauses. So we said it contains two or three clauses. So according to the kind of the sentence that we are going to review later on. So the four basic kinds of sentences in English are simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. The kind of sentence is determined by the kind of the clauses used to form them. So, for example, if we have one independent clause only, so that means it is a simple sentence. If we have two independent clauses, that means it is a compound complex. If we have one dependent and one independent, that means it's a complex. And, uh, you know, uh, we are going to review each one aside. So, what is meant by a sentence in general is a group of words that you use to communicate your ideas. And for each sentence, there should be one or more clause that expresses a complete thought. So, simple sentence is one independent clause. Why it is an independent clause and not a dependent one? Because we need only one clause to express a complete thought. If we write dependent clauses, that means we need another clause to complete the thought and it will not be a simple sentence. So, a simple sentence, it contains one independent clause that expresses a complete thought. That's why we call it simple. And it carries a one complete thought. So, uh, let's review examples of uh, simple sentences. The first one is fresh water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. So you have a fresh water is the subject, boils is the verb, and at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level is the complement. So you can see that we have one subject, one verb, and we have a complement. It is an independent clause that carries a complete thought. <laughs> Let's move on to the second example. Fresh water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. So, fresh water is the subject. Boils is the verb. Fresh water is the subject. Boils is the verb, so pay attention to this kind of sentence. And 100 degrees Celsius and the freezes. Boils and the freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. So here we have a compound verb. Not in semi, a compound verb. That is boils and freezes. A compound verb, boils and freezes. But we have one subject. Fresh water. But now I'm going to talk about two verbs. لا نعتبر verb واحد لكن نوع الverb هو compound verb. يعني boils and the freezes هي كلها تعطيني هنا verb واحد. هنا هي simple sentence. عندي أكثر من فعل لكن هو يعتبر فعل واحد. 
وهذه تعتبر a simple sentence. Fresh water and salt water. So here we have two subjects. يعني نسمي compound بالعفو. Compound subject. Okay. Fresh water and salt water. This is one subject. Okay. Compound subject. Do not boil and do not freeze. Do not boil and do not freeze. We have a compound verb. Do not boil and do not freeze. So you can see that we have a compound subject. Fresh water and salt water. Do not boil and do not freeze. We have compound verb. And then we have a complement at the same temperatures. But still it is considered one independent clause and a simple sentence. So we have a compound subject, a compound verb and a complement. يعني هو يعتبر هنا close واحد وجملة واحدة. لكن نوع subject ونوع verb compound. أنا ليش ركزت على هذه النقطة؟ Sometimes students cannot recognize such kind of you know, compound subjects and verbs. So when they have such kind of sentences, they recognize them as compound sentences or as complex sentences, okay? So here we have to analyze the clause or we analyze the sentence and we see if it carries one subject, one verb, and one thought. That means it is a simple sentence. But sometimes we have a compound subject a compound verb, not two sentences and not two clauses. It is only a compound sub subject and a compound verb. That's why it looks like a long sentence. It looks like complicated, but it is not like that. So it is a simple sentence. It is one independent clause. So please, students, when you need to recognize sentences, you have to analyze like this. Where is the subject and where is the verb? So like in this case, in, in sentence number three, you have a compound subject and a compound verb, but it is still considered as a close, a one close. And fresh water and salt water is the subject. Do not boil and do not freeze is the verb. And then you have a complement. <laughs> So, we shed the light on that because some students cannot recognize such kind of sentences. So, notice that the second sentence has two verbs. We said we call it a compound verb, boils and freezes. The, the third sentence has both compound subject and compound verb. So, all the three examples are simple sentences because they only have one clause and one coat. That's why we call it simple sentence. So, this is all we have about simple sentences. We call the simple sentence um, a simple one because it contains only one thought, one complete thought, and it contains one independent clause. Why it is an independent clause? Because it should not be attached to another clause to complete the meaning. It should stand alone. Okay, so we have a subject, we have a verb, whether it is a compound or not, and if we need a complement. This is all about the simple sentence. Do you have a question regarding the simple sentence? Do you have a question? So this is all about the simple sentences. So for now, we reviewed the kind of clauses. We said we, we have dependent and independent clauses. Then we have the first kind of sentences that is the simple. Can a compound subject have more than two subjects? Uh, they are combined, but it is considered one subject. OK, Sarah? يعني مثل هذا المثال خلينا نروح على المثال fresh water and salt water it is a compound subject but it is considered one subject not two subjects then if there are two subjects it is not a simple sentence a simple sentence is a subject واحد okay uh, which PDF 
if if you are talking about the same material for today you find the pdf on google class i posted yesterday انا راح نعمل بهذا النظام يعني انا دائما اخلي لكم البي دي اف اللي يخص المحاضره قبل يوم حتى اذا اكو طالب يحب يطلع على الماده يقدر يطلع عليها قبل يوم نفس هذه الماده موجوده بي دي اف بالكلاس Okay, do you have another question regarding the simple sentences or the kind of clauses? Then, طلاب تحبون تأخذوا لكم rest ونكمل مع compound sentences أو نكمل compound ونأخذ rest ونسوي review على complex sentences. تحبون هسا تأخذون rest? أنا أقول أخذوا هالسيريس لأن أخذته معلومات كفاية نأخذ لنا خمس دقائق أوكي ريست بعدين ننتقل على الكمباوند سنتنسز ممكن أيضا نأخذ خمس دقائق ريست وتكملون الكمبليكس والكمباوند كمبليكس لأن أنا أعرف الطالب يدوخ يعني الله يساعدكم لأن أنا أصالي كثير راح يعني أتكلم ناخذنا ريست هسه 12 9 و 12 دقيقة أو 13 دقيقة خلينا نقول من 9 و 20 دقيقة ترجعون هنا لا تطلعون من الكلاس لأن يعني أنا عملية قبولكم تاخذ من عندي وقت لا تطلعون من الكلاس ظلوا موجودين فقط غرقوا المايكات وإن شاء الله بال 9 خليني أكتب لكم 9 و 20 دقيقة نرجع على كونفاوند Okay. At 29 دقيقة نرجع على compound sentences. نعمل review لل compound sentences. أيضا نعطيكم استراحة وننتقل لل complex sentences. Okay. See you. بس مو طلعون من الكلاس لأن هذا الشيء متعب بالنسبة لي. خليكم الكلاس الدون مايكات
Hello again. So, are you ready? Okay, since you are ready, so let's move on to the compound sentences. So we said that we have the clauses, and out of these clauses, we form sentences. The first type of sentence is the simple sentence. It contains one independent clause. So let's move on to the compound sentence and see what does it contain. So a compound sentence is two or more independent clauses joined together. So for the simple sentence, we have one independent clause. But for the compound sentence, we have two or more independent clauses joined together. So we have three ways to write compound sentences. Either we join the independent clauses by using a coordinator or a conjunctive adverb or a semicolon. So the first kind is with a coordinator. So let's see this example that shows how to form compound sentence by using a coordinator and how to punctuate such kind of sentences. So salt water boils at higher temperature than fresh water. So this is the first independent clause. Salt water is the subject, boils is the verb, and we have a complement. After that, we have a coordinator. So we write a comma, then coordinator. So you can see here we have a comma that is shaded in purple. And then we have the coordinator, so. After that, we have the second independent clause. Food cooks faster in salt water. So food is the subject, cooks is the verb, and we have the complement. So you can see here, we have two independent clauses. Each one contains subject, verb, and the complement. So we need to combine these two independent clauses together in order to form a compound sentence. So how can we do that? By writing a coordinator and we attach both of them by the use of a comma. Okay, so we write the first independent clause, comma, we have the coordinator and the second independent clause. And the result is a compound sentence. So whenever you find a coordinator, that means it is a compound sentence. A coordinator with two independent clauses, of course, that means it is a compound sentence. So the other kind of forming compound sentences is by using the conjunctive adverb. Okay, so salt water boils at a higher temperature than fresh water, therefore food cooks faster in salt water. So when you use a conjunctive adverb in order to make compound sentences, okay, you need to write a semicolon, just like this one shaded in purple. Okay, you need to write a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and the comma after the conjunctive adverb, then you write the second independent clause. So you start with the first independent clause, salt water, subject, boils, verb, and we have the complement at higher temperature than fresh water. Therefore, as a result, or can it ذلك لكن كيف نكتب الكونجنكتيف ادفرب عن طريق البنكتويشن نستخدم 
semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and the comma after the conjunctive adverb. After that, we have the second independent clause, which is food, subject, cooks, verb, and we have a complement. So you can see if we have a coordinator, just like the first example, we only write a comma before the coordinate. But if we have a conjunctive adverb, we have a semicolon, we have to write a semicolon before the conjunctive. And after the conjunctive, we have a comma. So please pay attention to punctuation marks. Okay? conjunctive adverb, active punctuation marks. So the third kind of forming compound sentences is by using a semicolon only. Only a semicolon. So salt water boils at higher temperature than fresh water. Semicolon food cooks faster in salt water. So we have only semicolon that join the, the two independent clauses. So let's review a compound sentence is two or more independent clauses joining together, either by using a coordinator, a conjunctive adverb, or a semicolon. So let's review each one aside. Compound sentence with coordinators. So a compound sentence can be formed as follows. You start with the independent clause, comma, coordinator, and the second independent clause. In the same example that we reviewed, salt water boils at higher temperature than fresh water is the first independent clause. After that, we have comma, and the coordinator here we have so, because for the meaning so, uh, provides the meaning of a result, okay? Food cooks faster in salt water. So, there are seven coordinators. You can use them according um, to meaning, okay? You can use them according to the meaning. If you need to remember them, you can remember them as fanboys, okay? Fanboys, for, and, no, but, or, yet, and so. We have only seven coordinators. So when you write the coordinators, you only need a comma. And the choice of the coordinator depends on meaning. result, so. Okay? طبعاً عندكم chart on page 176. You can review the chart for uh, more information about coordinators. So we said the first type of making compound sentences is by using the coordinators. We call them the fun boys. We have seven coordinators. So for nor, we said we have seven. For and no, but or yes. So, so for no. It means and not. That means that it provides a negative meaning. It joins two negative independent clauses. Pay attention to the, the, the structure, okay, when you write no in your sentences. So for the structure, you need to write in a question word order, okay? You need to write in a question word order. So let's review the example to clarify the idea. They do not eat a lot of red meat, comma, nor do they eat many dairy products. So, no, followed by auxiliary. So, it follows the question word order. Nor, as a coordinator, followed by the auxiliary, do. After that, we have the subject, they, and the main verb, eat. And the first thing that we have to ask is to come. راح نكتب النور إذا ننتبه على السو سو food is the subject cooks is the main verb so there is no auxiliary there is no question word order okay فقط no تحتاج هذا النوع من structure and it provides negative meaning so if we compare it with سو 
So it's followed by a subject and the verb and the complement. For nor, it's followed by auxiliary, subject, and the main verb and the complement. So pay attention to this structure, please. So the other note that we have about yet, but and yet. But and yet have similar meanings. They both signal that an opposite idea is coming. But is a preferred when the two clauses are direct opposites. When the second clause is an unexpected or surprising continuation because of the formation given in the first clause. Yet is a preferred. So, both of them provides an opposite meaning, okay? But is it preferred when the clauses are direct opposite? That means you expect the opposite. You expect what is coming after but. Like in Mintestahdumun yet, it refers to unexpected or surprising continuation. That means you do not expect what is coming from yet. That's why we call it surprising continuation of opposite meaning. يعني نستخدم إذا عندي شيء إجا بشكل مفاجئ أستخدم يت ما أستخدم بات خلينا نشوف الأمثلة راح يوضح لنا أكثر I want to study art but my parents want me to study engineering so here we have direct but opposite I want to study art okay this is my decision or this is my wish to study art but my parents want me to study engineering. So we expect that sometimes parents reject, for example, our decisions. And it should be funny. How do you say me direct opposite? Let's see the second one, which is a surprising continuation of opposite meaning. I am very bad at math. I am very bad at math, math lesson, okay? Yet, my parents want me to study engineering. This is surprising. Why? Because the student is not good at math. So how could he or she study engineering, which depends on math? So this is the surprising fact. Okay? So because he is or she is not good at math, so it is not expecting that the student is going to study engineering. So maybe it is expected that they are going to study art or any kind of uh, you know field that is away from depending on math. So that's why we call it surprising continuation. يعني إذا هو طالب غير جيد في الرياضيات كيف راح يدرس هندسة؟ فهنا yet surprising. Okay, اللي ما متوقعي. طبعا نقدر for both sentences we can write but but for yet we can use it only with surprising continuation ما نستخدمها مع direct opposite اللي هو الاعتيادي so pay attention to the use of nor about the structure and pay attention to the use of yet about the meaning so you need to pay close attention to these two notes so this is you know, the previous one is about the compound sentences by using coordinators. Let's move on to the compound sentences with conjunctive adverbs. How to use the compound sentences by joining the joining independent clauses by the use of conjunctive adverbs. So, of course, you start with the first independent clause, then you write a semicolon, coordinator, comma, and the second independent clause. So pay attention to the punctuation. We said for coordinators, you write only a comma before the coordinator. For conjunctive adverbs, you write a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb, and after the conjunctive adverb, you have to place a comma. So we have the same example. Salt water boils at a higher temperature than fresh water, semicolon, therefore, and we have a comma, food cooks faster in salt water. So this is how to use the conjunctive adverb. Um, you can review a list of conjunctive adverbs and the transitions that you have in your textbook on page 179 for more details.
So the other way of writing compound sentences is by using the semicolon. So how to write such kind of sentences? Of course, you start with the first independent clause. You write only a semicolon. After that, the second independent clause. So let's review the example. Poland was the first Eastern European country to turn away from communism. Semicolon, others soon followed. So here we do not have one of the fun boys, okay? That means the, the coordinators, and we do not have a conjunctive adverb. Here we have only a semicolon, but when you have to use this kind of, you know, uh, of writing compound sentences. You can write it only when the two independent clauses are closely related in meaning. When the first independent clause and the second independent clause are very, very closely related in meaning. So if they are not closely related, they should be written as two simple sentences, each ending with a period. If they are not closely close related to each other. So if we, if you look at the example, Poland was the first Eastern European country to turn away from communism. Others soon followed. Others, that means it is a subject, that means other countries, other European countries, soon followed, followed Poland with the same action. حتى ما عدنا الverb ما عدنا complement يعني ما عدنا كتابتها ليش لأنه they have the same meaning they have the same reference so that's why we can write them in this way because they are very closely related and even we cannot or we do not have to uh, rewrite the details فقط بالحالة if they are too too related to each other يعني closely related to each other we should write in uh, semicolon on. We have the three three ways of writing compound sentences, either by using coordinator, conjunctive adverb, and semicolon. First, you make sure that you have two independent clauses, and then you write in the way that is possible for you, either by using the one of the coordinators, and you have to pay attention that you need to place a comma before the coordinator or you write by the use of the conjunctive adverbs and you place a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb and a comma after that or by the use of semicolon if the meaning is closely related to each other. So this is all about the compound sentences. Maryam. Nadine Ghadri, what do you have, Maria? Nadine Ghadri and Ghadri, but we have a few more techniques. Okay, Mohamed, Mohamed Hussain. Yes, miss. I have a little addition, and correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Uh, we do not consider the addition of a period between two independent clauses as a way to join the, the clauses. It just uh, changes uh, the sentence with two independent clauses uh, to two sentences with uh, one clause in each. Is that right? Uh, Hamad, would you please repeat it? I couldn't get your idea. You can sort more. Okay, please. Okay. Yes. yes. We do not consider the addition of a period between two independent clauses as a way to join the clauses. Just change. Uh, um, Ahmed, if we place a period, that means we separate them into two simple sentences. Yes, this is my uh, my idea. This is what mm -hmm. I meant. Yeah, if so if you write not, uh, a way of joining. No, yes. because because they are not joining together. Why? Because we write the first independent clause as a simple sentence, and we write the second independent clause as another simple sentence. They are not joining together by, for example, a punctuation or by a coordinator or a conjunctive adverb. The robots, معناها نربطهم together كوان sentence. لكن إذا كتبنا نقطة صاروا two different or two separate sentences. Yes, thank you. You are welcome. Fatma, for the semicolon. 
You can use this kind of compound sentences only if the meaning of the two independent clauses are closely related to each other. يعني يمكن أن نقدر نكتب بهذه الطريقة فقط إذا عندي المعنى بين two independent clauses اللي أريد أكتبهم together كلش معنى قريب ومتشابه بحيث حتى بعض الأحيان مثل ما ذكرنا بالمثال الأخير ما يحتاج أعيد ال verb أو أعيد ال complement because the meaning is you know uh, very closely related to each other فقط إذا المعنى كلش قريب أقدر أستخدم ال semicolon بالحالات الأخرى لا أستخدم ال coordinator أو ال conjunctive adverb Other questions, please? You have questions for the compound sentences? And the important thing is that the compound sentences are two independent clauses. And these independent clauses have three ways to write them as compound sentences. And depending on the thing that I have, I can either write them on the way of the coordinator, or conjunctive adverb, or semicolon. Semicolon is a word. فقط إذا المعنى جدا متقارب. So this is all about compound sentences. So, do you need a rest before we move on to the complex sentences? يحتاج ون rest. كتبولي بالشات بوكس. Okay, so if you do not need to rest, so let's move on to the complex sentences. First, we have a review on the clauses. We have two kinds of clauses. We have a review on the simple sentences, then we review the compound sentences. Now, we have to review the complex kind of sentences. <laughs> so, what is meant by a complex sentence? A complex sentence contains one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. The, the most important thing about a complex sentence is it should contain at least, okay, one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses يعني عندي أهم شيء واحد independent وواحد dependent ممكن أكتب أكثر من dependent clauses لكن الأهم عندي أنا عندي clauses مختلفة واحد independent وواحد dependent so the dependent clause will carry the most important idea العفو the independent بس لحظة خلينا نشوف سؤال الطالبة so we can merge every two simple sentences to make a compound one with one of the way of joints. Of course, no. That's very, very good notice, okay? Of course, you can make, because sometimes we need to vary the style of our writing, okay? So we cannot write, for example, an essay um, of only, you know, simple sentences. So we can write uh, some simple sentences, some compound sentences, and some complex sentences. So, in order to write compound sentences, you can follow one of the three ways. Okay, so we said that the complex sentence sorry, contains one independent clause that carries the most important idea and one or more dependent clauses. So, you can notice the difference. For compound sentences, we have two independent clauses. But for the complex sentence, we have one independent and one is dependent, or you can write more. So, in a complex sentence, one idea is generally more important than the other. So, we place the most important idea in the independent clause because it can 
standalone as a sentence. And we write the less important idea in the dependent clause. So we have the three kinds of dependent clauses. Either we can write them as noun dependent clauses, adverb dependent clauses, and adjective dependent clauses. So if you need to know more about the dependent clauses, you can review chapters 11, 12, and 13 for you know uh, information and for practices. So of course we are not going to study the chapters. That means chapters 11, 12, and 13 because of the short of time that we have. يعني أنا لو ألحق أعطيكم حتى هذه الشابترات اللي تخص الكلوزز. لكن ما نقدر يعني ما نلحق بالنسبة للمنهجنا لهذا إذا أنتم تحسون عندكم ضعف بالكلوزز أو ما عندكم معلومات كافية تخص الكلوزز تقدرون تنظمون وقتكم مثلا خلال الويكند أخصص لي مثلا كل يوم ساعة أدرس بها هذه الشابترات يعني سيلف ستدي أنتم تدرسون ممكن مع زملائكم together وتتعلمون أكثر بخصوص الكلوزز لكن إحنا ما راح ندرسها لأن ما عندنا وقت. Okay, so perfect sentences with adverb clauses. So an adverb clause acts like an adverb. So the function of the adverb clause is the same as the function of an adverb. That is, يعني it tells the reader where, when, why, and how. يعني where, عن المكان, when, زمان, why, كيفية. يعني السبب العفو and how كيفية. So it expresses the meaning of where, when, why, and how. And adverb clause begins with a subordinator. So we said that for for the dependent clauses they start with subordinators. So here the adverb clauses will be the you know uh, the the dependent clauses here. So they can start with subordinators just like when, while, because, although, if, so, or that. Because, you know, they express the meaning uh, that is clear to an adverb. It can come before or after an independent clause. So the place of the adverb clause, which is the dependent clause, either you can write it before the independent clause and you place a comma and your independent clause, or you can write it after the independent clause. That means you write your independent clause, comma, and the dependent clause. We have examples. So here the first example where the adverb clause comes at the beginning of the sentence, at the beginning of the complex sentence. Although, in the نوجد subordinate معناها هذه dependent clause. لأنه الـ Independent Clauses ما يحتاجون أي attachment حتى يعني يكمل الـ meaning. So when, when you see a clause that starts with a subordinator, that means it is the Dependent Clause. So here, although women in the United States could own property, comma, they could not vote until 1920. So as a complex sentence, here we have two clauses. The first clause that starts with although is the dependent clause that carries the less important idea. And the other clause, which is they could not vote until 1920, is the independent clause that carries the most important idea of the sentence. So what is the most important idea? The most important idea is that women were not uh, you know, able to vote in the United States until 1920. This is the most important idea. So, uh, we said you can write it, you can write the, the uh, adverb clause either before the independent or after the independent. So, the first example is where the adverb clause is before the independent clause. يعني بادي الجملة بي. خلينا ننتقل على الجملة الثانية اللي هي بدت بال independent clause. A citizen can vote in the United States when he or she is 18 years old. 
So here the first clause is an independent clause that starts with the citizen as a subject, can vote, verb, and we have a complement. After that, we have the subordinator when, okay, which is the start of the adverb clause. He or she is the subject and is the verb and we have a complement. So you can see that if we start the complex sentence with the dependent clause, so we have to write a comma. After that, we write the dependent, sorry, the independent clause in order to separate the, the uh, dependent clause that is written at the beginning. But if we start the conflict sentence with the independent clause, after that we have the subordinate and the rest of the clause, the dependent clause, you should not write a comma. يعني إذا شفنا عندنا subordinate بداية الجملة من أخلص لكلوز الأول أخلي كما لكن إذا subordinate ما جت لبداية الجملة يعني بدينا بالindependent clause هنا مو شرط أخلي كما من أكمل الجملة هذه يعني بكل بساطة أنا ليش أركز على punctuation لأن الطلاب كثير يخطئون punctuation وهذه تاكل درجات من المقالات كلش تاكل درجات فننتبه هنا إذا عندي subordinate مثل هاي although يعني هذا الindependent clause بالبداية من انتهي في الindependent clause أخلي كما بعدين أكتب independent الindependent clause اللي هي subject verb complement but if we start with the independent clause and after that the dependent clause we can write it directly by writing the subordinate without a comma okay so I hope it's clear to know so complex sentences with adjective clauses an adjective clause acts like an adjective that is it describes a noun or a pronoun so the function of the adjective clause here will be to describe a noun or a pronoun. An adjective clause begins with the relative pronoun. فإذا انتبهنا عندنا adjective clause body who, who, which, whose, or that. Or with the relative adverb اللي هما where or when. So that means uh, it is an adjective clause and it follows the noun or a pronoun it describes. طبعا هنا النوع ال relative pronoun راح يحدد لي نوع ال close إذا كان مطلوب من عندي أعرف a kind of a clauses. So here for example, men who are not married, men who. So you can see who are not married describes men. So functions just like an adjective. So the the, so it starts with the dependent adjective clause are called bachelors. So men is the subject who are not married is the dependent clause are called bachelors as the, the rest of the independent clause. Let's review the second example. Last year we vacationed in Cosmo. So it starts with the independent clause. Last year, we is the subject, vacation is the verb, and we have a complement. Then, because we started with the independent clause, so we have to write a comma. After that, we have the dependent clause, which, as the, the uh, you know, subordinator, which features excellent scuba diving. So you can see here, which features excellent scuba diving describes Cosmil. Okay, describes Cosmil. So it has the same function as the adjective. This is the adjective close, the dependent adjective close. So the complex sentences with noun clauses. A noun clause begins with WH question word that, whether, and sometimes if. A noun clause and acts like a noun it can be either the subject of a sentence or oh sorry a subject of the independent clause or object of the independent clause so 
they come either as a subject or as an object. So let's review the first example. That there is a hole in the ozone layer of Earth's atmosphere. So here it comes as the subject, okay, as a subject. Is well known. So it starts as a subject, the dependent non close here. The other one is as a, an object. Scientists know what caused it. Here it functions as an object. So in the first example, that there is a hole in the ozone layer of Earth's atmosphere, is the subject of the verb is, and we have well known as a complement. In the second example, what caused it is the object of the verb no. So scientists as a subject, no is the verb, and what caused it is the object. So the kind of the um, dependent clause, you know, uh, it depends on meaning, and also you can identify the kind out of the structure. For example, if it starts with that, what, if, when, which, who's that? So all all of these things determine what is the kind of the dependent clause that you are having. But we said that for a complex sentence, there should be one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. So you have to keep this in mind when you identify or write complex sentences. And of course, you have to pay attention to punctuation. If you start the complex sentence with the dependent clause, that means يعني عندي subordinate بالبداية أخلي comma when I write the independent clause. But if you start with the independent clause, so after that you write your independent clause without a punctuation mark. So keep uh, attention to these no, no, notes when you write or identify complex sentences. So, do you have questions for complex sentences? Do you have questions for now? So, if you do not have a questions, do you have uh, do you need a rest before we move on to the compound complex sentences? rest rest before we move on to the compound complex sentences. It will even uh, chat for us. Naha. Does this be compound sentences, right? Okay, min khalas nirja'i. Min khalas nirja'i. Ala muddil tasjil, yani yana hna fatihin tasjil. So, do you need a rest? Did you get your doing rest? Khanim daqayq, ashir daqayq. راح يصير عندنا آخر شيء اللي هو compound complex sentences ومن بعدها تخلص المحاضرة. صفة محتاج رئيس. أوكي. إيش كثر تأخذون خمسة أو عشرة؟ هو شنو الرئيس؟ على مود شوي عقلكم يفصل. من ترجعون تقرون مادة جديدة حتى تفهموها. إيش كثر دون five minutes؟ أوكي five minutes. يعني عشرة وخمس دقائق إحنا هنا عشرة خمس دقائق لا تطلعون من الكلاس خليكم موجودين فقط اغلقوا المايكات عشرة وخمس دقائق راح نعمل ريفيو على الكمباوند كومبليك سنتنسز
Yes, Norsan, please, you can ask. Miss, are you there? Yes, no. Uh, I'm not sure if the end of the channel is coming. No, he will also have it in kitchen. I wish that I could go. Okay. Yani will also. I wish that. I could. I can. Okay. So, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. I wish this is the, the first. Okay. This is the, the subject on the verb, the first clause. The end that I could go, this is the second clause. And how did in the tariqa sahiha li kitabatka? According to structure or grammar, the correct grammar sentence. Sorry, miss. If there are no that, like I guess I. I guess that I would come in. How many structural sahih? 
Uh, maybe there is a mistake. Thank you, Evans. Yeah, okay. لا هي مو مستيك ممكن هنا هذه بالكاجوال لانجويج اوكي لكن من نجي نتكلم عن الكتابه اذا ترديها ككتابه اكاديميه طبعا تختلف عن اللغه المنطوقه اوكي فلازم يعني if it as a casual how can we categorize or classify this because there is Uh, subject, then subject, other subject with this. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to compound complex sentences. So let's move on to the compound complex sentences, which is the last type of sentences that we are going to review. A compound complex sentence has at least the three clauses. So keep in mind that when you read, when you need to write in a compound complex sentence, you have to write at least the three clauses. Two are always independent clauses and one dependent. So keep in mind that you need to write two independent clauses and one dependent. You can write more, but at least you write two independent clauses that can stand alone, okay, and one dependent clause. So you can use almost any combination of dependent and independent clauses when you write your compound complex sentences, but you have to be sure that they're there is at least one dependent to close, okay? So you have examples of uh, compound complex sentences. So you can see that the independent clauses are colored in red, while the dependent clauses are colored in blue. So let's review the first one. I wanted to travel. I is the subject, wanted is the verb, and to travel is the complement. You can see this is the first independent clause. I wanted to travel. It is followed by a dependent clause, after. So it starts with after as a subordinator. So it is a dependent clause. After I graduated from college, I is the subject, graduated is the verb, and you have a complement. هنا طريقة البنكتويشن اللي استخدمناها مثل طريقة الكومبلكس سنتنسز عندنا بدينا ب independent clause followed by the dependent clause there should uh, no need to use a comma there is no need to use a comma here بعدين راح نكتب ال independent clause الثاني and we need to attach it to the to the dependent uh, uh, clause in order to form The, comp the compound complex sentence. So we write however. So because it is a conjunctive adverb, okay, so we need to write semicolon before however and the comma after however. After that, we write the final independent clause. I had to go to work immediately. So this is the compound, the compound complex sentence. It starts with I wanted to travel as an independent clause. Then we have the dependent clause after I graduated from college. After that, we have the independent, the second independent clause. However, I had to go to work immediately. So the, the second example is after I graduated from college. Here it starts with a dependent clause. After I graduated from college, and we say that if the sentence starts with the in, with the dependent clause, يعني إذا شفنا عندي subordinate بالبداية مثل after هنا, so we should place a comma after that, 
and we write the rest of the clauses. So it's followed by an independent clause, which is I wanted to travel. Then I need to write the second independent clause. So here I use but as a subordinate, okay, no active compound sentence. But followed by a comma, I had to go to work immediately. Independent plus independent, so I need to use a comma and coordinator. Number three, I wanted to travel. So it starts with independent clause, followed by dependent clause. I wanted to travel after I graduated from college, comma, but I had to go to work immediately. This is independent clause followed by a dependent clause because I had to support my family. So here for number three, we have two independent clauses and two dependent clauses. And the either dependent clause راح يكون بعد the independent مباشرة ما يحتاج استخدم كما في ما شفنا هنا. Okay, I wanted to travel after I graduated, and I had to go to work immediately because I had to support my family. لكن عندما كتبت after I graduated from college, but I had to go to work because we have. Event the clause followed by independent. That's why I need to use a comma and a coordinator. Number four, I could not decide. This is the first independent clause where I should work or what I should do. So at first I did nothing. So here we have two independent clauses and two dependent clauses. So the first one is I could not decide. This is the first independent clause followed by where I should work as a dependent clause or what I should do as a dependent clause followed by so at first I did nothing. This is the independent clause. So we said for compound complex sentence, as we said before, there should be at least the three clauses. Two are always independent and one is a dependent clause. So you can see here, for example, for the first sentence, we have two independent and one dependent. For the second example, we have also two independent and one dependent. For the third example, we have two independent and two dependent clauses. Okay, so you have to write, as we said, at least two independent and one dependent in order to form compound sentence. And for punctuation, you punctuate the compound part of a compound complex sentence like a compound sentence. That is, you use a semicolon and you use a comma or use a conjunctive adverb. Okay. Uh, with the placing the comma before the coordinator if you need to use a coordinate and you punctuate the complex part like a complex sentence with adverb clauses put a comma after a dependent adverb clause and with non clauses you use no commas just like the, uh, the examples that we reviewed here so for the compound complex sentences, we said you have to use two independent clauses and one dependent at least. And when you write punctuation, if you find a compound part, you punctuate it as a compound sentence. If you find a complex part, so you uh, punctuate it as a complex sentence. And in this way, uh, you vary your style of writing by using simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, or a compound complex sentence. But you need to know how to uh, join them together, what kind of coordinators or connectors to be used, and how to punctuate the sentences. So, do you have any questions? 
Do you have any questions for now? And uh, close, uh, Sarah, the close, for example, it carries the function of an adverb or it carries the function of a noun. It carries the function of an adjective while, uh, but if we have a subordinator, you know, you have a subordinator followed by a close. It doesn't, you know, function as like a noun to describe, uh, okay? A verb or doesn't have the function of an adverb or an adjective to describe a noun, okay? يعني هنا أنا راح أتحلوها close by close يعني أو sentence by sentence بعدين close by close وراح تعرفون كيف تفرقون إذا كانت هي عندي subordinator وإذا هي كانت عندي close أنصحكم تدرسون الفصول اللي تخص لي closes حتى تصير عندكم معرفة أكثر بخصوص لي closes اللي هي فصل 11 و 12 و 13 يعني احنا ما راح ندرسها لكن انتوا قروها خصصوا لكم وقت اعملوا جدول يعني ممكن تدرسون يعني كجروبس وحتى تفهمون اكثر ف يا طلاب هسه عملنا ريفيو على سمبل سنتنسز كومباوند سنتنسز كومبلكس سنتنس ان كومباوند كومبلكس سنتنسز وقلنا لازم نتعلم كتابه كل هذه الطرق حتى من نكتب اساي راح ننوع لانه راح تصير very very boring if you write in one style okay for example you cannot write an essay in simple sentences only راح تصير هي نفس النمط وراح نعتبرها ضعيفة يعني ستايل هذا ضعيف للطالب حتى لو هو grammatically correct ideas are correct or complete or clear but still the style is weak so that's why you need to vary your writing sometimes you write with simple other times you write with compound sentences so you know how to write compound sentences you know how to write in complex sentences طبعا هنا النصيحة اللي تحتاجوها إنه من تجون تكتبون وقت الكتابة ترجعون لهذه المعلومات أخلي المعلومات على إيدي موجودة وأعرف كيف أكتب compound sentences وأكتب فكرتي بعدين أحولها إلى compound complex أخلي عندي أفكار بعدين أتعلم كيف أحولها إلى complex sentences بهذه الطريقة راح نضمن إنه إحنا نقدر نكتب style متنوع Uh, هي شلون تكتبيها اذا انت عندك complex sentence فراح تعرفين how to punctuate them اذا عندك compound complex راح تعرفين how to punctuate them هي مو تبعا لل close هي تبعا لل نوع sentence اوكي okay? تعمليها punctuation واذا انت كاتبه compound complex sentences راح تعرفين يا جزء هو compound فتكتبين punctuation على اساس الكمباوند سنتس نرجع هنا للكمباوند سنتس اذا عندي الجزء اللي خص الكومبلكس راح ارجع للمعلومات اللي تخص كومبلكس سنتنسز لهذا نقول المعلومات دائما تخلوها يبكم وترجعوا لها ما ننساها يعني نخلص شابتر 9 ونتركها لا نرجع لها بين فتره وفتره يعني هي راح تحدد لنا كثير امور طلاب اذا عندكم سؤال سالوه اعتقد هو وقتكم خلص يعني اللي يريد ينصرف يقدر ينصرف واللي عنده سؤال يقدر يبقى ويسأل وأنا راح أخليكم تمارين على جوجل كلاس حتى تكتبون الحلول اللي تخصكم أنا احتمال مو أكيد احتمال الأسبوع الجاي راح أكون مجازة يوم الأحد أتمنى نقدر نعوض المحاضرات حتى ما نتأخر حتى تخلصون أغلب المادة بالفصل الأول يكون أسهل لكم يعني فنحاول إذا يصير وقت نقدر نعوض المحاضرات إن شاء الله تسجيل بس ينزل عندي أرسل لكم إذا أنتم تحتاجون